Tonight's text is Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 2 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of the Spirit. I think all of us have at one time or another been consumed by things that perhaps don't matter, things that have no eternal value. Maybe first day of class and the teachers going through explaining what, what's going to occur over the next several weeks. Or, or maybe it's the first day of a new job and you're getting a lot of instructions, a lot of directions, and you just, you just start to space out. You kind of lose focus and, and drift off. And, and I think that there's been a number of times in, in my life where I, I circle, uh, I say to myself, what am I supposed to be doing right now? And I know that many of you have been in a similar situation. What, what am I supposed to be doing? And certainly we have those instances in, in life where all around us there's a lot of uncertainty or confusion or travail, maybe uh, ad, ad, adversity, ter- turmoil. And we say, what am I supposed to be doing right now? A couple of words are used in this text. Vanity, vexation. Vanity, when I hear the word vanity, I think of a, of a, of a station. When we are working on houses, or if you live in a house, a lot of times there's a vanity, and it's a station that, that someone goes to beautify themselves. There's a mirror, and it reflects the sitter, and they can work on themselves, right? And it's a vanity, A display, the proper definition is a display or a show of excessive pride in one's appearance, qualities, abilities, or achievements. This idea of of conceit or self-importance. Definition goes on to say something that lacks real value. I think of some of the tourist shops. Sometimes you you go to the beach or something and there'll be about 10 or 15 stores all in a row and they're all selling the same thing. T-shirts and and magnets and and there's just no value to to the, the product, yet we buy them. There's no value. There's there's a hollowness or or an emptiness to it all. A worthlessness. Vanity. There's a vanity to it. Vexation. When I hear the word vexation or, or vex, I, I'm reminded of, of the word hex. And I don't know if, if there's a, a relationship to the word, but if you think of, of hex, it's to be under a spell or to be enchanted or perhaps cursed, spellbound, to be charmed. To be hexed. Well, to be vexed is, is, is something similar. It's, it's to be provoked or, or tormented. Have you ever been tormented by someone or something or afflicted by someone or something? And it's almost like there's a spell over you that can't be broken, a curse. And indeed, as, as humans, we know that there is a curse of sin that, that encases, it, that envelopes This whole world. Vexation is to be disturbed or to stir up, to irritate, to annoy, to leave in distress or troubled. So we see here that this author, who many think was King Solomon, others think that 
It was kind of a, a persona, kind of a literary device where someone, someone later was writing in the persona of King Solomon. But this author, he, he says, all is vanity. Everywhere I look, there's just an, there's a hollowness. There's, a, there's an emptiness to everything that I see. And I see all of this, all of this trouble. I see all of this confusion, or I, or I see all of this vanity, all of this self-promotion. There's something missing. We know that the human quest is to find purpose and peace and really a place in this life. The search of and for fulfillment and gain or advancement. Always trying uh, to improve upon our situation. That's, That's the human curse. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity, says the preacher. And he searches, and he gives himself to knowledge and to wisdom, and he searches, he observes, and tries to find, well, what is it in life that satisfies? What is it in life that will fulfill? He finds in Ecclesiastes 1 that that there's no real purpose in life. We're, We're just drifting Around, unsettled, unanchored to it, to anything. There's no real purpose. There's no new thing. Oh, there's a lot of things that are that are promoted as as being new or or solutions to to any problem and every problem. But there really is no new thing. The author states. He goes on to state that there's no cure for this vanity and vexation that he observes. Also in chapter 1, he says that there is no lasting honor or, or respect in, in, in these things. In verse 11, he says, there is no remembrance of the former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. I remember uh, I'm reminded of, of James and how he says that, that life is, is just a vapor. Right. We're here for, for a day, for a moment. And then we drift off. We have this moment and nothing more. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. All is vexation. All die, he goes on to say. And then later in the book, he, he says that's, that's kind of the, the paradox of it is, is all of our gain, all of our advancement, we leave to fools, he says. Chapter 2, the author talks about the futile attempts to find meaning, to find peace, to find purpose through a variety of means. He says that he enjoyed pleasure or indulgence. Maybe maybe there's an answer there. Maybe there's some satisfaction. Maybe there's some fulfillment in pleasure. And he watches and he observes and, and he decides, no, there's, there's, there's nothing there. It's hollow. It, it leaves you empty. Right. He says, I, I went to laughter. But what, what does it do? It doesn't satisfy. And we certainly see that in today's culture where, where we just make a mockery of the system, of the reality that we are all left in. And we try to joke about it because... It is so unpleasant. And we laugh about it for a, for a, for a moment. 
But then as we laugh, <laughs> we realize that we're laughing at the situation that we're in. There's no, there's no remedy. Vanity of vanities. He says he gives himself to wisdom and to folly. And, and, even, and even wisdom, while there's some good in it, it it's, it's just like folly. Oh, but he's a creator and he, he makes great things, great works. I, I build houses. I, I plant vineyards. Maybe I'll find some satisfaction there some fulfillment in life. Oh, but there's, there remains a, a hollowness. I made me gardens, orchards, planted trees, exotic fruits, flowers. Oh, the aesthetic. And how pleasing some, sometimes that can be just, just to sit and, and appreciate the beauty even of God's creation. In this, in this sense, sometimes it's, it's the beauty of, of what we build with our own hands and the, the aesthetics of life. And some will put so much energy and so much resource into, into developing and, and cultivating an aesthetic that appeals to the senses. Oh, that makes you feel alive for a moment. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity, the preacher says. Oh, I made pools of water. I got servants. Had great possessions. Cattle. Livestock. Fancy cars. All of the things that that we look for in today's world. They might be fun for a moment. And they are. They're fun for a moment. Oh, but it doesn't last. It, it doesn't last. I gathered to me also silver and gold, stocks, bonds, crypto. It says peculiar treasure. Oh, we gather. We try to find gain. We try to build wealth. Maybe there will be some security in that. Maybe there will be some hope in that. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. And it leaves us empty. I got me singers, musicians, all of the things that, that could delight me. Whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. And this was my portion. This was my portion. Something that I worked for. Something that that I developed, something that I, that I built. Oh, the Lord is our portion. The Lord is our portion, the psalmist says. And certainly there is some virtue to, to working hard, uh, the author says, and there's some, some, some benefits to, to savor uh, our labor and to enjoy it. But behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. He goes on to talk about the bitter truth. The bitter truth is that everything is useless and empty. Everyone eventually dies. Achievements of our goods and of our wealth will ultimately be left to fools. But then he turns to the better truth, the content with what you have, your station in life, your enjoyment in this moment, in the place where God has put you. There is a better way. In Ecclesiastes 3, he talks about uh, the vanities 
vanity and righteousness added through the rhythms of life. Such a beautiful chapter. To everything there is a season and a time, every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time to of peace. Oh, but what profit is there? What profit is there? He goes on to talk about everything being beautiful in its time, in its season, and indeed it is. He, he goes on to talk about everything uh, having an, an appointed time, the things that are gained through travail. He also talks about God's judgment. And indeed, we can be so, become so consumed with just the rhythms of life, the seasons of life, the monotony of life, that we lose ourselves to it. Oh, and once again, vanity creeps in. This vexation of spirit this, this turmoil that, that arises in our hearts and unsettles us. Here we are in April 2021, I think. Are we living in a vortex? I am just completely speechless, really, by the world that we live in. And I pray for our children. I pray for our saints. I pray for our friends and our family. And I see the vanities. And I see the vexation. I see so much heartache, so much confusion, so much dissatisfaction, so much travail. And all is vanity. All is vexation. What are we supposed to be doing? What are we even supposed to be doing? Oh, we, we go around each day with, with our responsibilities. The goings in and coming out and, and whatever our responsibilities are. We become so consumed with, with even ourself and our, our own securities. I'm looking for a word, our, our, our own uh, preservation. We're trying to save ourselves. The conclusion of the whole matter. The writer says, Fear God. Fear God. That's the answer. You know, I, I love the Scriptures. I love the Spirit of God. 
And I love that it's simple. And, and I know that sometimes theology and, and all of that, it, it, can, it can really consume a lot of time and a lot of energy and, and a lot of, your, a lot of your, uh, your thought process. Fear God. Fear God. Reverence Him. Worship Him. Fear God and keep His commandments. Obey. Fear God and obey God. For this is the whole duty. This is the whole responsibility. This is the whole purpose of man. Do you ever wonder, what is my purpose in life? I know particularly our our young people, they're challenged to live a life of purpose, to live a life of conviction. Here it is. Fear God. Keep His commandments. That is it. It's simple. It's real simple. But it's the hardest thing to do in life. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. All is vexation of spirit. Oh, don't get stuck in the quagmire of of all of this goings-ons. Stay focused. Stay focused on the Lord. You stay focused on the Lord by by looking into His Word, by by spending time in prayer, by encouraging one another, by singing hymns, we're told in Scripture. Stay focused. Stay encouraged. Fear God. Obey His commandments. The song is 133. The altars are open for prayer.